Good morning. Uh, thank you to Marta, Susanna, and Cecil for this wonderful session and on textile. Very, very interesting and very, very busy. So, um, let's begin with our topic about Mycenaean carpet and especially about Mycenaean tepa. As in many languages, a linear B2 um, object can be referred to through both words and logogram. That is to say, through drawn directly or indirectly um, linked to this object. And this way to refer to an object still works nowadays, especially with image, I mean. Here, we have a very direct relation between the image and the text, because the text is going about a dog and we have the image of a dog. But what if we have this kind of imaging? None of these two imaging refer to toilet, but <laughs> we have, we can understand which is the relationship between the text and the image. Which is the difference that we have, mm, at some point, the text and the imaging have split. So they refer to, to different things. And we have to reconstruct all the path these two different rules have mm, done to understand which is this relation. So, which is the object referred to by the Mycenaean word tepa and this ligature that we will see. So, which kind of data can we have from linear B tablets? We have contextual data that um, talk us about the shape of this tepa. And as far as the shape <coughs> is concerned, we know that it was a heavy textile, it was large, it was woolen, and it was rectangular. We know that because of the big, big, the very huge amount of uh, sheep wool that is required to, um, to have this fabric, and rectangular is a deduction that can be made on the basis especially of the shape that we will see now. But um, we can discuss about that. So, especially on this contextual basis, Mycenaean tepa has been compared with alphabetic Greek tapes, that is, carpet. That it seems to fit almost entirely the characteristics required by contextual data from linear B tablets. We have also the ligature that refer to this object. A ligature um, is a um, drone that is obtained from a logogram and from another syllabogram used in logographic function inscribed inside the logogram. So the logogram is tela. And you can see that it has a squared shape. There is wrinkle or not, this is, um, this is the same. It is related to different of scribal ends. It's not referred to the fabric or the quality of the textile. So the logogram is Tela, the, the agrophonic abbreviation is T, and you can see that it's made throughout a vertical long stroke and three different horizontal strokes, three in each side. So the ligature tela plus T is a squared tela with T inscribed. This is what we have in linear B as referred to tela plus T. But we have probably ancestors of this ligature and both of the syllabogram T and also of the logogram tela. We can see this in linear A and we have this through the sign AB54. These are the drones of the sign AB54. You can easily see that this sign is quite similar to a, to a loom. 
So we could wonder if uh, either it referred to directly a loom, or rather, at also it seems to be more likely, it referred to the object mainly due <coughs> on the loom. That is maybe the generic name of a fabric. But this is the attestation of sign 55, 54 in linear A. How is the sign developed? We have two different paths for the same sign. We have this sign in the linear B, va, wa, that is a syllabogram, and we have this, this same sign in the logogram tela. It seems to have no relationship between the linear B tela and linear B wa because of the simplification of the shape of the imaging. But just let um, think that they have a different purpose because you use a logogram um, much more than a logogram and they have different function too because the main function of a logogram is to recall directly the object. So this um, tela recalls the shape of a fabric, while the wa has remained more similar to the original AB54. And it could be one of the reasons why they differ so much, even though they, mm, they were born. Of this, on the same sign. We have sign T in linear A2. This is, is this one. Is, this is not just the sign T because we have not the pure sign T in linear A. We have it just inscribed into another sign. In this case, it, it is inscribed into the logogram for Y. But we um, can see that it is made of a vertical stroke and three different, three, mm, three lateral stroke. This time they are not horizontal, but rather they are obliquos. And we, if we make a comparison between linear A and linear B sign, we can see this difference between the horizontal stroke and the obliquos work, mm, strokes. We have a further attestation of, the, of this T sign in a further description, that is tel ZP1, and we cannot say so far if it belongs to the linear A or, the, or to the Cretan hieroglyphic. We have arguments for both interpretation, of course, but we, we are not able to decide. This is the inscription I was referring to. And of course, you can easily imagine which is the sign I'm interested in. That is this one, of course. It is made of the sign AB54 and AB4. AB4 is sign for T, and 54 is sign for Y. That is what we have previously seen. We can compare this one to the linear A sign for T, and we can see that they have both a, mm, a large vertical stroke in the middle, and then we have further mm, stroke obliquos on both sides. So this one is much more similar to the linear A mm, sign than to the linear B. This is because it is more ancient, of course. Mm, it could be argued that um, we have more than three strokes. So maybe it was even more ancient than the linear A sign we have in Gnosis. And maybe it could use as an argument to say that it was, this inscription belonged to the Cretan hieroglyphic. But we have also argument to say that it belongs to linear A. So, I don't know which is your idea about this shape, this drawn, but I am not sure it could be a carpet. 
because the previous uh, description we have seen from contextual data that is heavy, that is large, that is woolen, uh, and rectangular, because this is the shape we have here, could be applied also on different objects. And if we go back to linear B tablets, we can also see um, from contextual data that this uh, tepa, tela plus te, belong to the royal sphere, to the ritual sphere, and it was a luxury object that maybe was um, it it mm, it was required for mm, special palace or commercial needs. So it's very very tentative to compare the drone of the linear A great and hieroglyphic sign to these wonderful scars of the ladies from the Larnax of Tanagra. This is very tentative, but it's not so scientific because we have one and one we cannot match just because they fit. However, 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 let's go to the linguistics data. I've said that uh, it has been applied this parallel, but I've said not that there is a linguistic problem in this interpretation, that is this. If we have E in Mycenae, we cannot have A in alphabetic Greek. It can be the opposite, but, but cannot, cannot be this. So this interpretation has some linguistic problem. It, it's not the only one. We have further problems from the linguistic point of view with this interpretation. What if, what if, if we compare Mycenae and Tepa to these words? Tebar is a word of unknown origin that we have in an Akkadic dictionary and is labeled as uh, framed work. Framed is German. Um, uh, this in English. <laughs> foreign, thank you. As a foreign word. So we don't know where Tebar comes from. And we also have Tebena. Tebena is the Greek word that Greek used to refer to Latin toga. And Latin toga comes from the Etruscan tebena, and tebena was a dress made, it was a dress that was used by priests in royal context, and it has also further similarities. One more thing, we cannot be mm, sure that tebe, tebena and tebar are really two different words or maybe just one, because we can have a common basis, teb, that is the one we see also in Mycenaean tepa, and maybe also before in linear A and in Creta hieroglyphic, and then we just have different suffixes, that tebar and tebena. So what if we make this compare? We can say that both tepa and tebena are heavy textile, large, woolen, belonging to the royal or ritual sphere and luxury object. Actually, the only difference seems to be that toga and tebne and tebena went rounded exactly and uh, where tepa was squared. It could be a difference, but we can, uh, we can take into account also for the factor. First of all, um, it seems to be that it was a general mm, distinction, a general differences between Greek and Roman attire as far as the shape is concerned, because generally speaking, Roman mm, attire were rounded and Greek was squared. Or maybe we mm, think it was squared just because of the logogram. So this is a question to, to be aware. But it seems to be not an obstacle so big if compared to the uh, to all the information that we have. And lastly, as our host Catalan says, <laughs> 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 